What's going on everyone? This is the cheapest all-wheel drive bike you can buy on Amazon right now. This is the Hanavir H100 and it's $14.49 for a dual motor, dual suspension e-bike on Amazon. Is it any good? Let's check it out. Okay, here's the Hanavir H100. I'm excited for this one. If you've ever seen my channel before, you know I love my all-wheel drive bikes and this is the cheapest all-wheel drive bike I have ever seen. Dual 750 motors just $14.49 on Amazon. I'll link it below if you want to check it out. But I'm going to walk us through this bike today, show you some of the pieces and parts up close because there wasn't much information out there on this bike yet. And then I'll show you performance footage and then we'll kind of wrap it up at the end. I'll tell you a few things that I like, dislike, some things I learned just from my ride experience. So let's get into it. First thing I want to mention is just the arrival of the bike. It was packaged very well, a lot of foam, a lot of protection on the bike, didn't receive any damage in shipping, and it's just folded up inside the box. There really isn't much setup to this bike at all. You basically just pull all the zip ties off and unfold the thing, and you're up and running in pretty much no time. So if you're worried about having to do a whole lot of assembly on a bike when you get it, you don't have to worry about that with this one. But let's just start at the front and move towards the back. Front wheel and tire package. So you got CST tires, they're 20 by four inch fat tires. It is not a quick release because you do have a motor here in the front. So you've got a through axle there. It's a 750 watt geared hub motor in the front wheel. It does have a plug release here. If you ever need to change the tire, you just have to unplug the motor there and unbolt it. So that's, that's really handy. Actually, believe it or not, not all all wheel drive bikes have that. I have an all wheel drive bike that does not have this plug here. And when I have to change the tire, I have to pull the wheel off and then leave the whole thing dangling by the motor wire. It's kind of annoying. So that's good that they thought had enough ahead to put that plug in there. For brakes, you've got hydraulic brakes on this bike and they're a 160 millimeter disc on there. It's a brand I've never seen before. Looks like it says DY Island. I don't know the brand. I didn't have any problem with them at all though. They were smooth and quiet and they worked really well. So I don't know. I mean, never heard of this brand, but it seemed to work just fine. So no issue with the brakes on it. The H100 does have a front suspension fork. I don't see any brand on it, so I'm not sure what brand it is. And it's got this lever on the top here that's basically just an on off switch. There's no minor adjustments to it. It's either free to spring or it's locked out. Not the most amazing suspension fork I've ever had, but hey, it's there and it helps out a little bit. You got a headlight here at the front, nice and big and bright. And this bike also comes equipped with a tail light, a brake light and turn signals off to put up some uh, nighttime shots where you can see the lights a little bit better. But that's pretty good that the H100 has a complete lighting package. I've had e-bikes in the past before that don't even have a tail light or brake light. To me, that just seems like it should be a standard on an electric bike. You should at least have a tail light and brake light and you've got all of it with the H100. It comes with fenders and a rear rack. The fenders are metal fenders. They're a little bit louder when stones kick up into them, but they look really nice. They're color matched to the paint. So you get fenders front and back and this rear rack here. I'm not sure what the weight rating is on it. I wouldn't put a ton on there. Normally they're about 50 pounds you can put on the rear rack, but it's nice they include the rear rack at that $14.49 price point. And you've even got a spot here you can buy an aftermarket front basket if you want. I've looked up on their website. The front basket I think goes for 30 bucks. All right, now let's talk about the frame a little bit. Good paint job on it. I like the paint job. It comes in just this one color. I didn't see any, any other color options, so it's just this gray, but I do like the color scheme and the graphics. It looks pretty sharp. It's a good color combo. They are in the paint. They're not stickers, so you're not peeling that off. You may have noticed that this is a folding frame design. I'm not a super big fan of the folding frame designs because I don't fold my bikes a whole lot. I have a video of me folding and unfolding this bike to see. I, I just don't, I find them cumbersome to fold. You know, it's an 80 plus pound bike and you're trying to get it all folded up into a little ball and it's kind of awkward when you try to lift it. You know, my, my wife isn't able to, to fold and lift bikes like this. When you get them all down into their compact side, they're, they're kind of awkward to lift the weight into the back of your car, but you can do it. This is a folding bike. It does fold down pretty small and if you, have the necessity you need to get it into a vehicle or get it into a closet or whatever it is, you can do that with this bike. But for someone like me who never folds the bikes, I'm kind of indifferent with that feature. It's nice that it's there, but I, I probably won't use it all that much. And going along with that folding feature, that's how you get to your battery pack, which is inside the frame right here. It's a 48 volt, 16 amp hour battery pack. It's hidden in the frame. You gotta unlock here with the key, start to unfold the bike. You have to open the bike up. 
in order to slide that battery out. So it's not the most convenient bike to get the battery out of, but you do have a charging port on the other side where you can just you know, plug it into the wall right here. You don't have to take the battery out to charge it. So that's, I mean, that's what I do. I just use that port on the other side and charge it in the bike. And it's actually kind of impressive that there's a 16 amp hour battery pack inside this frame. Normally they're smaller than that. These folding frame bikes typically have like a 10, a 12, maybe 14 amp hour. So 16, that's pretty big. And I did a range test on this bike. I, I was shocked. I'm gonna do another video for you to show how it went down. But I rode this bike with relatively no pedaling, just very minimal pedaling. I put it in dual motor mode, pedal assist five, and just hit the throttle and did kind of full throttle in order to try to burn through the battery quickly. And this bike went 30 miles, 30 miles with hardly any pedaling in the drawing the most power, both motors going full throttle. My GPS said 28 miles and the bike said 30. So <laughs> close to 30 miles of range going full blast on this thing. It, I'm shocked. I don't, I don't quite know how it was able to do that, but it had phenomenal range. Now that's pulling me around at 180 pounds. There's a lot of factors that go into range. You know, I live in a pretty flat area. If you're heavier weight and you live in a hillier area, that range is going to go down a lot. So, but that's just, that's just one piece of data. I was pretty impressed with the range out of it. Now let's talk about what's going on up on the handlebars. First thing we'll discuss is these mirrors. They were pretty hard to get set in a usable spot. These are the free mirrors that they give you. They give you all kinds of free goodies in the box. So you get a set of mirrors, you get this phone holder, you get an air pump. Um, I don't even know what else. There's a bunch of goodies in the bag, the display programming manual. But these mirrors, they clamp onto the bar and it was pretty hard to find a way to clamp them where I could see around my shoulders. They're pretty narrow and this, the reflection is kind of like a magnification. So. I don't want to sugarcoat it. I, I'll be taking these off. I found them really hard to use. It's a nice free gift. It, I appreciate the thought, getting the phone holder and, and the mirrors free with the bike, but I didn't, wasn't able to get them to work really well for me. So that's, that, that's the mirrors. You can see how I've got them mounted. I kind of flipped this one backwards because otherwise this would hit into the shifter. But anyway, you can try them out and see if they work for you. I'll probably just switch mine maybe to bar and mirrors if I can but you've got a right hand twist throttle, seven speed thumb shifter. This is the phone holder they give you. And again, great thought that counts. My phone didn't really fit in here. This thing kind of hit on the buttons, so I'll probably change that out. And then over here is all your, your buttons for doing, this is your all wheel drive button right here. That's how you toggle between single and all wheel drive. When it's pushed in like that, that's all wheel drive. Your turn signals, your horn, and then this controls your display right here, the plus and minus. Power button is on the bottom. This bottom button over here doesn't do anything. And this up here is like a selector button. And then this is for your headlight. So there's all kinds of buttons going on over here, but they're pretty self-explanatory. Let me turn the display on for you so you can see what that looks like. I'll put up some, we're in the sunlight here and it's kind of hard to see in the sun, honestly. So we'll put up some better camera shots of what the display looks like, but it gives you everything you need, your miles per hour real big and your battery life and your odometer. And it's very programmable. That was actually really nice of them to include the programming manual in the, the kit, in the box. I mean, it's a color manual with color screenshots. It shows you how to program every setting on this bike. You can set the different pedal assist levels between you know one to three or one to nine you can have up to nine levels of pedal assist you can also dial in the strength of the pedal assist on a whole different setting of course adjust the speed and the, the units and everything but they give you the whole manual right with the bike which is pretty refreshing so really pleased with the screen and the programming featuring of it i wish it was a little bit brighter easier to see in the sunlight but it is a nice looking color display screen when you get it in a, a low light setting all right, now let me give you a couple more quick specs. The bike's weight, on my scale, it was 82.5 pounds, which for a folding e-bike, I'm gonna say that's kind of on the heavy side, but for a dual motor, dual suspension e-bike, 82 pounds is definitely on the lighter side. The weight capacity, I did ask about that. They didn't really give me a direct answer. They just said that the, the test rider that they use weighs I think they said 350 or 380. So I think you'll be able to hold 
most all riders on this bike as far as weight capacity goes. Now the minimum sea height is 33 inches. I took a bunch of videos of me getting on this bike at different sea heights. I've got a clip of me on it at its lowest, the lowest sea height, and then also the lowest handlebar height. And then I've got it where I, where I rode it. You know, the seat where I had a position, the handlebars where I had them for a comfortable ride position for me. And then also I put the seat and the handlebars up to their max. And I'm gonna say the maximum sea height is undefined <laughs> or unlimited it was so tall it was like up to my neck there's no way no way i could have ever got on the bike so you don't have to worry if you're six foot five the seat's going to go plenty plenty high for you this is a bike that can fit a pretty wide variety of riders at a minimum seat height 33 i think someone you know in the five four five five range is probably gonna be very comfortable you get under that it might start feeling a little bit tall for the rear suspension i'll give you some close-ups here on the setup and I would compare it kind of to the front suspension, right? You know it's there, it helps a little bit. It's not the most amazing suspension shock I've ever had. I'll put up a picture of it so you can see the logos and everything on it. You might be able to swap this out for something a little bit better on the performance wise, but hey, we're talking about a budget e-bike here. I mean, it is what it is. This is a $1,400 e-bike. You can't expect name brand top quality components on the bike front to back. They're trying to hit a budget number here. $14.49 for all of this is pretty good actually. And the suspension, you can tell it's there. It's helping you out a little bit. But like I said, there's not a whole lot of travel out of the shock. So it's not like a riding on a cloud. But you do notice it more than you know you would on a hardtail bike. For the gearing up front is a 52 tooth chain ring and it's plastic, but it is double sided, which is nice. So chain never popped off on me. And the back, the rear freewheel is a 1428. You got decent pedal feeling. Once you get up to the higher speeds, you know, this bike goes about 28 miles an hour. When you're at 28, you're pedaling pretty quick. You can still input a little bit, but at 28 miles an hour, you're starting to hit that ghost pedal type feeling. The rear derailleur is a Shimano 20, and then you've got your 750 watt geared hub motor in the back your controllers are in here so the battery takes up this part of the frame here and your controllers are right here there's two controllers in there one controls each wheel and i did ask the ratings on them they said they're 18 amp controllers so that'll kind of give you if you know what that means it'll give you a feel for the power output on this bike it is all-wheel drive so it does have great power but it's not crazy uncontrollable power like some of them have where the front wheel is just all over the place because they have 30 amp controllers in them and it's you got to wrestle the bike and it's kind of dangerous that's not this one at all it's a pretty manageable power but i think we can take a look at some of the clips now i did top speeds and hill climbs and uh, just some general riding to give you a feel for what the ride experience is like on this hand of here so let's check that out now all right let's try throttle only top speed run This stretch of road is kind of flat and then it goes into a little bit of a decline. It's like we're holding about 28. I don't feel like the motors are really working anymore. I feel like they kind of stop there at 28. So I'd say that's your top speed right there, about 28 on the GPS, 30 on the bike. After that, you don't really feel the motors propelling you, pushing you any further down the road. So it's, uh, I guess, in that class three level. All right, let's do a quick acceleration test. We'll accelerate up to 20 miles per hour. I'm in dual motor mode. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Pretty good takeoff. 20, that was pretty quick. That was pretty quick. Let's get in. Now we're at the hill climb test. We test all the bikes, we time them up this hill. A 750 watt fat tire bike will do this in about 22 to 25 seconds. This one's got two motors, so I'm expecting much faster. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Just a touch of wheel spin off the line. It's climbing strong. It's gonna be a very quick time way faster than a normal 750 watt bike. Two motors helps a lot and time. Woo. That was quick. That was definitely under 20 seconds, I bet. We'll check in editing, but very strong hill climber. Two motors makes a difference, man. 
All right, we came back down into the shade here. Let's do a stop for you so you can hear the brakes. I mean, smooth, controlled, quiet stop, except for me skidding the back tire. You don't hear the brakes, really. Nice brakes. Never heard of the brand, but they seem to function really good. Um, and there's another thing. Listen to the motors. Can you even hear the motors? That's the question. Full throttle. You hear the tires more than you hear the motors. I mean, there's two motors running, and you can't even hear them. It's quieter than a single motorbike. It's a different noise. I don't know. I, I, but they're very, very quiet motors. And I've been riding it around mostly in dual motor mode because it's very controllable in dual motor. Normally on a all-wheel drive bike, the front wheel just has so much spin and it's really hard to navigate like a low speed turn like this, like doing a U-turn. But you can actually, there, I did the throttle in the turn and I didn't even, the front wheel didn't even like spin and whip out from under me. That's pretty rare on an all-wheel drive bike. It's got um, power, but not crazy power. It's just solid controllable power. It's nice power. And I know it has, I believe, 18 amp controllers, two 18 amp controllers. So they're not crazy high powered controllers like you know, on some of the other bikes where they got 30 amp controllers and then you hit the gas and the thing, all the wheels are just doing a burnout and you can't even control it. This one, it's, it's a smooth, controlled, stronger launch. So it's, it's an all wheel drive that's not scary to drive. I feel like people would not be afraid to drive this bike or I wouldn't be as worried as if, if you accidentally leave it in all wheel drive and you're you know, stopped and you got the wheel turn and you hit the gas. It's not gonna whip out from underneath you. That's, that's always my concern on the all wheel drives, people that aren't used to them, that front wheel washing out. But you don't have that with this, it's really controllable. Another thing about the brakes I forgot to mention is they're, they're reversed. The right hand is your front brake. It's like a motorcycle. Your left hand is a rear brake. That's backwards from how it's normally done in the US. It's almost always on a bicycle. Almost always right hand rear brake. So I got into a little trouble doing an emergency stop with this thing once. I really clamped down on the brakes thinking I was, and I clamped harder with my right hand thinking that was the rear brake and it was the front. So. I wasn't expecting All right, that. let's try this steeper hill climb. I think it's like 25 to 28% on this hill next to this staircase. We just turn and go straight up. And it dug its way up. No help for me at all. Made that hill, that's impressive. It's carrying 180 pounds up this hill. No effort from the rider. Straight up this, let's do it one more time. feel the front wheel start to spin a little bit but I mean no problem carried me right up that thing that's pretty good this guy I mean I'm telling you dual motors for hill climb that's where it's at let's get a good run at it be cakewalk this time Ooh, no problem but yeah there's uh, some really good hill climb power in this bike how would you do that without the motors I don't know if I could even if I just turn the motors off let's go turn the motors off I'll put it into First gear, I'm in the high, the lowest gear. I'm gonna try to do this hill. Oh, that's hard to pedal right there. I'm gonna stand up, number one. Can I make this hill? Oh my God, not even close. <laughs> not, not even close. Wow, I mean, it is a heavy bike. It's 85 pounds that I'm trying to pedal straight up a hill, but I mean, wow. There's no way I'm getting up this hill without motor power. All right, let's talk about suspension. You know, this has dual suspension, front fork and a rear shock. And I wouldn't say that either is amazing. <laughs> you can tell they're there, but they're not amazing, which is to be expected. I mean, we're, we're dealing with a budget e-bike here, and it's clear that they put the money into the motors and the all-wheel drive system and the power, not so much into the suspension. I can bottom out these front forks pretty easily. The rear shock doesn't have a whole lot of travel to it. You could probably make a few upgrades yourself if you really wanted to beef up the suspension, maybe get a little bit softer shock, put on the back with some more travel. But I mean, it's, you know, it's there. It's better than a straight up hardtail, but clearly that wasn't 
the uh, the main point of interest on this bike. They definitely opted for the power and the motors and not a uh, cushy suspension, but it gets the job done, I guess. Well, hopefully those clips give you a better feel for what the ride experience is like on this Hanover bike. And I mean, good speed, good power. Anytime you can go 28 miles an hour using just the throttle, I'm okay with that. That's, that's pretty good speed. Hill climb power was great. I mean, the, the really steep hill next to the staircase, this thing was just chugging its way up. That's why I love the all wheel drive bikes. They just, they have really great hill climb power. The front wheel just kind of digs and churns and claws your way to the top of the hills, which is really nice. The ride comfort on it, I mean, it was pretty comfortable. I was a little bit stretched for the handlebars. I like them a little bit closer to me. That's just kind of a product of this giraffe style handlebar stem, which isn't my favorite. If this had like BMX bars on it or something, that'd be pretty cool. And uh, we didn't even talk about this absolutely enormous seat. I forgot to cover the seat. Look at the size of this seat. It is the largest seat I've ever seen. It is large and in charge. It scoops your butt on the sides. It's got springs in the back. I mean, the seat was pretty nice. I can't complain about that seat. It was a very comfy ride, but I mean, that thing is just absolutely huge. I got a feel there, feeling that's gonna be very polarizing. People are either gonna love it because it looks so comfy, or they're gonna hate it because it's just, you know, it's got like these wings that flip out on the sides. It's, it's absolutely enormous, but all right, enough about the seat. It was a pretty good ride position. I just felt a little stretched for the handlebars. This bike, um, I don't know how to put this into perspective. This would be great for, I think, someone that is looking at getting into e-biking. They've been doing a bunch of research. They want a bike that's got decent speed. They want some good hill climb power. They don't want to break the bank. Here you go. This is this is one to look into. 1450 bucks, you get this arriving at your door. Just go pop on to Amazon. I'll link it below. Amazon, click add to cart. This shows up at your door. It gives you everything. You got headlight, taillight, turn signals, rack, fenders, um, good hill climb power and speed. You know, you got phone holders, mirrors, air pumps it's like a one-stop shop everything's included with this bike so i think it'd be great for someone who wants to try and see if they're going to like e-biking it also also makes me want to say i guess a phrase my one of my old bosses used to say and that's let's call a duck a duck right let's call this bike what it is for fourteen hundred dollars you can't expect premium name brand parts through the whole thing they did a good job of creating something at a budget level I'm, I'm impressed with that so it, but it is what it is it's called the duck the duck you know it's not going to be a high end on every part but it does give you a lot of features for the money all right now before i go i want to just maybe go through some quick likes and dislikes so the likes would be good speed good power great range uh, the price the price is fantastic for what you get the fact that it just comes with everything you need to get up and running programmability is good i think it looks pretty good as far as the negatives uh, there's a couple of little things I don't like. I mean, the giraffe style handlebar stem is not my favorite. The the fact that you have to leave the key in all the time always always bothers me. This is very common though for this folding frame style that you got to leave the key in like that. But I'm always worried I'm gonna something's gonna hit it and snap it off in there. But yeah, the key must remain in at all times while you're riding the bike. So for me, that's a negative. The battery removal, the fact that you got to basically fold this bike in half in order to get the battery out you know, not super convenient i mean i guess the suspension i mean that's certainly not one of its outstanding features it's great that it's there it does function could be a little bit better but hey you know let's let's call it what it is we're looking at a 1400 hundred dollar bike here so the fact that it's got dual suspension is, is pretty good so i guess i'll i'll hold on that negative for now all right, folks, I am really curious to hear what you've got to say about this bike. I'm sure Hanavir wants to hear it as well. So put your thoughts in the comments below. Tell us what you think. And if I missed something, if you've got a question, put that in the comments too. I'll do my best to answer it. If I can, I'll link it below so you can check it out on Amazon, see if it might be a contender for you. Thanks to Hanavir for giving me a chance to try this bike out. And I hope you found this video helpful, informative, at least entertaining. If you did, consider hitting subscribe and come back for more. And uh, thank you all for watching.